Welcome to Veritas ABCs, Encapsulating and Mirroring the Root Disk. I'm your host, Gabriel Smith. The scope of this tutorial is to provide a simple overview on encapsulating and mirroring the root disk. The ideal audience for this presentation are people who are beginners to Veritas. This presentation does not provide a direction on manipulating SAN and NAS drives and other advanced concepts. What's a mirror? Just about any system has a disk. Mirroring is basically duplicating the information on the disk in your system to provide redundancy. This is known as a rate one configuration. In the event the disk fail, your system will stay up and running because there, uh, is, the other disk will resume operations. In this tutorial, we're going to add a hot spare disk, which would basically keep kick into action in the event one of the disks fails, leaving you with two disks instead of uh, one disk in the system. Whenever you install the new device or disk into your system, the first thing that you would have to do is you would have to force your system to acknowledge the additional hardware. Config ADM is the utility that you would use to do this. And the example provided below, config ADM-AL, you can see that the system has acknowledged the SCSI bus driver and it's currently in unknown state and it's acknowledged the other three disks which are currently in unknown state. After the system has acknowledged the hardware, the next step is to force the system to load the drivers or the software for the hardware. DevS ADM is the command that you would use to do that. Once the device will say disk, once the disk has been acknowledged by the system and the drivers have been loaded for it, the next step is to format and label the disk as to prepare for Veritas. After typing the format command, you'll be presented with a menu-driven system. Simply select the number that corresponds to the disk that you've installed, and then select Label and Q to exit the menu system. To confirm that Veritas can now see the disk, or to actually uh, bring the disk under Veritas control, VXDCTL enable is the command that you would have to use. VXDTCL does not provide any output. However, to see the results of running that command, you can run a second command called VXDISLIST. VXDISLIST is a very basic Veritas command, and it's considered one of the bread and butter commands that you would use to gather, gain, and get information from Veritas. In our example, we've run VXDCTL. Actually, I've run VXDCTL enable, but I didn't include it in the slide. And then shortly after, I ran VXDISLIST. And now I can see that Veritas sees all three disks, and they are currently online and invalid. Encapsulating the root disk. The VXDISK ADM is the command that you would use to encapsulate the root disk. Uh, just a little bit more information on VXD ADM. It's another bread and butter utility that you will use to do a lot of functions in Veritas. The for every option in VXD ADM, there's also commands with which you could uh, take out, take your time out to learn to maybe speed up the process. However, VXDIS ADM is the safest and probably the quickest for non novice, not so much the quickest for experienced professionals, but for novice, is probably the best way to go about uh, performing functions in Veritas. Run VXDIS ADM and select option 2. Follow the prompts to encapsulate the root disk into newly created disk group root DG. The encapsulation will be created in about two or three reboots. Uh, once it is completed, you will be able to see the results in ETC VFS tab, which we'll show in the next slide. 
here in I actually cat it ET VFS tab for those who are not aware all your file systems is stored in the file not the actual file system themselves but the location for the file systems as well as the uh, options for mounting those file systems are stored the file system configurations are stored in ETC VFS tab and this example the server has already rebooted several times and we can now see uh, our file systems or volumes have been encapsulated and they have been noted to ATC VFS tab we can see that uh, swap vol oh sorry let's go back we can see that uh, swap vol is into ETC VFS tab root vol and home these are all volumes or subdirectories that was on the original root disk before we encapsulate it. Now you can see that they actually have the Veritas wrappers on it or they are in the Veritas wrapper. Another way to confirm successful encapsulation of the root disk is to do a DF minus H command. I've done it and I've actually had to cut out a lot of information simply because it just wouldn't fit on one page so here again we can see the root file system has been mounted on slash dev slash vx slash dsk slash boot dg slash root vol we can also see the home vol has been mounted within the veritas context we should be able to see the swap vol but unfortunately there was one of the items that I cut off just to make this presentable Adding disk to the group. Again, going back to the VS disk setup. Actually, uh, this is the first time I'm talking about VS disk setup. VS disk setup is a command that you would want to use to force Veritas to see additional disk. We probably should have run this in the beginning, uh, seeing how I actually went through all the steps beforehand and then created this presentation. Uh, afterwards there's probably going to be a few inconsistencies like this however VX disk setup allows is another command that allows Veritas to see the disk uh, let me just read here just to make sure that uh, what I'm saying corresponds. disk groups root oh I'm sorry yeah disk group root, root DG was created during the encapsulation before you add the disk to the disk group you must first initialize the new disk you may accomplish this by using the command VX disk setup minus I, the device name, format, and slice. Okay, so there are two types of formats. The force format is CDS disk. Uh, I forget what the acronym means, but it, it's basically a way of ensuring that the disk can be imported from servers to servers. Slice disk is the slice format is the option that you want to choose in order to perform a root mirror. Uh, the reason for this is that the root file system has a special requirement for a private region I believe. Don't quote me on this but a private region. And the private region is similar to an inode and inode is the best thing that I can think of to describe it but essentially what's happening is that there's a lot of Veritas information that would be stored on the private region and the slice format will enable you the disk to be able to have that private region after we've initialized all our disks the next command that we want to use is a command to actually bring the disk into the Veritas disk group that command is VXDG uh, so I want to be clear here there's actual multiple uses for the VXDG to stay within context VXDG minus G for group at disk and then the name of the disk in Veritas equals the name of the disk as the operating sees it. What you're actually doing here is that you're creating a virtual disk in Veritas and you're using the actual hardware device that is available to the operating system. So the command again is VXDG minus G. You name the group. In this case, is root, root DG. Then you can uh, name the function is add disk. The other 
function you could use is remove disk, but in this case it's add disk root dg02 equals c controller one target one disk zero. And again, uh, the root DG02 is the name that we're creating for the virtual device in Veritas. And this example, you can see we've created uh, two disks, root D DG02, root DG03, and we map them to the actual device that the operating system has acknowledged. Okay, so now once we have all our disks into the system, we've actually encapsulated the root disk, and then we added one disk to mirror the root disk on, and we've added an additional disk so that we can mark it as a spare. So you want to run our bread and butter command again, VX disk ADM, select option six to root uh, to mirror the, the root disk, in this case the root DG group. You'll be asked to select the source and destination basically and basically all you have to do is follow the prompts and this could actually take a bit of time when you complete com when, once it's completed you can run VX print to view the details of the mirror and this example again I've had to cut uh, a huge portion of the material out just to make it fit into this into the slide but as you can see we have three disks in our root DG group uh, root DG 03 disk is marked as a spare we can see two volumes uh, home and root vowel the swap vowel was cut off just so that we can put it on the page we can also if we focus in on the home vowel we can see that it involves at least two disks home well, two, two plexes, which are subdisk, home dash zero one and home dash zero two. Everything is active, so on and so forth for root file and swap file. If you could see it, at this point we're going to mark a disk as a spare. I just want to point out there's another inconsistency here. We did a VX print, and it showed that we had a spare disk, but this uh, sh wouldn't have actually sh it wouldn't have actually shown the spare until after we did it in this slide here but at any rate this is a, fair, a fairly simple procedure you do a VX disk ADM select option 12 to set the hot spare and VX disk list command if we run that bread and butter VX disk list command again we'll see that the C controller 1 target to D0 has been marked online as a spare. Uh, that is actually the last disk at the bottom of this page. Again, the idea is, is that if you lose one disk, the hot spare kicks into action and you will have two disks instead of one disk after losing uh, one of the disks. This, again, the hot spare adds reliability and um, yeah, it basically adds reliability to your system reliability and redundancy. That pretty much concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, if you want copies of this small presentation, send me an email to busy386 at gmail.com. If you want me to create other Red Hat or Solaris tutorials, I would actually be delighted. You can send me an email at busy386 at gmail.com.